Hey, imagine I was talking to my dog going, oh, God, I'm so glad you love me because, you know, I've had a really difficult day. And your dog just turned around and went, yeah, but you bring that on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, <laughs> Does your dog give you a reality check yeah, every other you're hour? You're supposed like, to be my friend! Oh my god, Jeff, shut the f*** up! Life is a challenge. How do you get through it? Laughing at the dark and dirty. We walk you through all the naughty secrets of the adult industry, and you get to be a fly on the wall with two best friends in the business of boobs. We want to hear your dirty secrets, too. If you have stories to share, questions for us, need advice, then send us an email to twndpodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 702-900-6446. We'll always be laughing here. It's our favorite way to cope. If you like what you hear, hit the subscribe button, share with a friend, and leave us a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. And we thank you for coming this week. Bitch. There's an amazing uh, team we got going on here. Yeah, I'm pretty neurospicy and I talk a lot with my hands. So when we first started um, holding the mic, doing episodes, the it wasn't even holding. It was we had these little like mic arm stands and I talk with my hands. And so I'd just be hitting it. <laughs> Lord, like doing that. Out. What's that? F- and, uh, what's that? Bushido, kar- Bushido karate or whatever on the oh, thing? Oh, yeah. Like... <laughs> Like um, what's his name? What's his name? The old guy who is an actor, Steven Seagal. You know what I want to do? Are you yeah. like, like that? Out of everyone in that space, you've picked the least. F-ing but that's how I would look doing yeah, it. Yeah, fair like, enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that like, Tai Chi. Sh- is that where you're like? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. On the, but on the wooden, you know, with the like the little wooden blocks that got like sort of things like that, and you have to slap into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, no, is that, I remember. Do I just pick up a dildo? Is that? A, <laughs> no. You smoke weed out of that. Press, press the button. We got wow. it down. We got it down. That's great. <laughs> what a fun oh, space. That was on silent. All right. So, welcome back to the Totally Wholesome Not Dirty Podcast. I am your host, Molly Stewart, and Laura Contreras. Woo. And hey. today we have joining us Jeff Leach. Hello. Where, where, where do I look? At you. So I look at your hey, 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 This is your hey. camera here. I'll spin this so you can even see yourself. You can say. Hey, Cam. How hey, are you? What's up? <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, ladies. We've just been talking about your incredible space, which the viewers. Oh, no. You've only gone and spilled water all Let's over yourself. Let's hope it's just some liquid IV. It is. Hey. Did, you know that, these, did you know that, that one stick of liquid IV? Immediately. That'd be fun. <laughs> One stick of liquid IV dissolved in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more effectively than water alone with the I help of CTT that. technology. Wow. I want, if only there was a discount code to purchase some of it online. Laura, oh, is there a discount code? You're in luck today. <laughs> Actually, there is a discount code. Oh, TWND. <laughs> well, mm, 15% mm, off. Mm, and free. Mm, mm, 15? Mm, not 15%. 15, 15. Wow. Oh, no. That's five more than 10. So, you know, there you go. Maths. Let's go. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, <laughs> So you have a new a comedy a spectacular. I do. I have a comedy. Not uh, a special. A well, yeah. I mean, listen. For the layman, it is a special, you know. But it's uh, <laughs> a special. What's a comedy special? They're all a bit identical at the moment. Do you know what I mean? They're kind of just like, all right, bloke going up, doing five minutes at the beginning of like, oh yeah, this is the city I'm from, and I uh, really feel yeah. like connected to it. And then it's like they're doing an intro for up. like a like a rap documentary. Kind just of. Kind of like, yeah. This is where I was born and raised. Or it's just Welcome to my crib. <laughs> Fist bumping their friends who are slightly more famous than them yeah. as they walk out on stage. You know, it's like, gentlemen, how much did you pay them to be there? <laughs> exactly. And then, uh, and then, forty-five minutes to stand up, and then a five-minute outro, and then that's it. Whereas <clears> mine, uh, I called it spectacular because it's got stand-up. Of course, there's mm-hmm. like twenty-five minutes of written material. There's fifteen minutes of crowd work in Vegas, uh, but then there's also an animated segment where I voice all four mm-hmm. characters. There's oh, a rap sick. music video. There's a sort of dramatic dramedy dialogue that runs throughout between me and my own ego. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, checked it out last night, Laura. If you haven't, you should. That's amazing. You should. I will. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Thank you're going to you. be really involved in this conversation. Well, what was your favorite bit? <laughs> Based you on know the, the description, beginning, the I beginning just go, part where you're sitting in all white. Yeah, that. Yeah, part. you like that, that part. Bit. Yeah. Nice, nice. I do look quite Jesusy at the beginning. You don't do, I? You do. It was very. I'm canny. Um, yeah. One of the one of the things I was actually curious about, just in some notes that were sent over, was that um, you were in a documentary and you became a male escort. I did, yeah. I've done a bunch of um, <laughs> sex worker adjacent stuff, mm-hmm. uh, and then also do a podcast with another, with a you know, sort of prolific sex worker as well. Um, 
but I do. Uh, I did documentaries for BBC. One was about male escorting called Male Hookers Uncovered, where we basically looked at all the scams involved, the process of becoming a male escort, the care and the community side of it, because mm. it is a service as well. Yeah. I truly believe that, you know. Uh, God, the number of fucking incels who would shoot up schools if there wasn't sex workers available to them, you know? Yeah. It's like, so. Um, <laughs> What is that? Is that you breathing? Who's breathing is that? You got such... <laughs> Someone's got really heavy breath. Yes, you. Yeah, oh, you got, you maybe got, my mic's oh, just mic loud. Flew you, got a you got a strong, oh, no. you got strong nasal That's breathing. Why. That would be why. Let's I knew there was out. something going Look on. I could hear it too, and I was like, I don't know if I should say anything, but it was me all along. I'm glad it's like we a got horror it. movie. Who's coming for us? Watch this. It was a little bit. It was just, yeah. That's because she's been lifting, bro. She's been stacked all morning, just getting those glutes and ooh, biceps ooh, popping. Ooh. And oh, so she's Hell still yeah. I'm still just down breathing from heavy it. from yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Listen, it's strenuous. You ple you pee blood, so. I did pee blood, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we can get <laughs> to that story. Um, Don't you hate ads? They take away from the conversation. But you can go ad-free with us at patreon.com slash podcast. We create monthly photo sets, host Zoom chats for our dirtbag tiers, and even create short films. We have a wholesome pledge option if you want to show a little support, or dirtbag tier if you want to go all the way with us. We release episodes a day early for all tiers, and each episode is ad-free. So if you want to level up, go to patreon.com slash podcast and show your support. Yes! But yeah, uh, yeah, I did this documentary and part of the documentary, I, I set up a website and I got a client and I had sex with a woman for money mm -hmm. and uh, that was fun. Yeah. It, was, it was sort of fun. The money or the sex? I mean, so the <laughs> sex was definitely fun. She was a stripper actually and she was a fan of all my other TV shows that I'd done. So oh, cool. she was like, That's great, I want to pay him to f*** me and also what a nice role reversal for me to be mm -hmm. the one paying for the sexual service rather than being paid for it mm -hmm. so she enjoyed that awesome. um and then i had fun but then as soon as it was done and the money was on the table and then she'd left then i had a little emotional fallout i felt yeah. a little weird afterwards i was like oh i don't know if i like that because <laughs> i've never paid anyone for sexual gratification and i've never been paid for se sexual gratification yeah. so it was strange um but so then did you have I'll to go in this. the reverse though and then pay somebody's to kind of even it out no no it didn't, <laughs> I didn't. It immediately went out and became a pimp yeah i just say uh no i did you know what i did do though and this wasn't in the documentary i actually saw that woman again oh and really i yeah uh, aside from the documentary she hit me up she, pro bono she reached out no pay again <laughs> she reached out so i actually pro technically <laughs> <laughs> did a full escorting service that wasn't part of our documentary nice. with That's the awesome. same woman yeah and i did yeah. it a second time and then she started telling me some crazy shit about uh, her partner or ex-partner and her kids it all got a bit messy and i was like nope yeah yeah like you didn't pay me enough for this part you know? <laughs> yeah, otherwise exactly. you're paying at therapist rates because yeah, <laughs> like, cue the lifetime real. music like, i also like... more just didn't want a lunatic like look him up trying to find my address because you know yeah, I, was, I was fucking I've, his ex-wife i've dealt with a lot of lunatics my a ex being crazy. one of them but also just fans in general well i mean you know, nothing's, gonna, mm -hmm. nothing's gonna put him in a good mood like talking about him on this podcast which he probably listens to so uh, i don't give a hey you crazy <laughs> he's got a bigger boyfriend now he's <laughs> he, he won't know <laughs> Actually, but it's oh right. goodness jesus i well i don't him. I hope he gets health and uh, help and, you know, works out his issues and blah, 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 blah. I mean, I do too, but I wish for that for many years. After he's <laughs> yeah, 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 I feel you. <laughs> she lost the she lost the will to keep thinking that, you know? Damn. <laughs> I just don't really, it's a funny thing, I don't really think about it that much anymore until people bring up crazy exes. I'm like, oh yeah, fuck mm. a lot of that out. But then you immediately go to that place, so there's still some hurt, there's still some pain oh, at the core absolutely, of that. Yeah, yeah. that kind of stays up. there for like a long time. Do you do therapy? Yeah, I have. Okay. Yeah. You have. See, that, that means you're not doing it. You have done in the past, but you're not doing it currently. Yeah. See, that's the fun thing is like I've had a lot of experiences. Do you go to therapy? Every week. What about you? No, I don't. But I don't see anything wrong in it. And I know everyone could value like doing it. You know oh, what man. I mean? It would you're really... like, I'm okay. I don't <laughs> know. No, I'm not issues. okay. I just haven't ever done it. I mean, shout out to not, you know, like to everyone that does do it I think mm -hmm. that's a great thing and I know that it's a good resource to always like reach out to when you feel like you need it and I would do it because I like talking about 
what's going on in my life to someone who like would be a therapist. Who has you know? to listen. They can't even walk away mid-conversation. Well, yeah. they yeah. could, but that would suck, right? Because well, you're paying them. That's yeah. the issue that I had going <laughs> back into therapy. <laughs> yeah. Was they just like checked out. Like I didn't have great experiences <clears throat> with therapy before. Like my ex would always send me to therapy to be like, they'll tell you what's wrong with you. And then they'd be like, that's actually... It sounds it's like him. it sounds like him. It's probably and a him like, problem. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But um, so it was one of those things that when I you know had the divorce, got back into therapy, like to actually, well, my goal was to make my therapist laugh. Right. I was really lonely, and I ended up like making her cry and laugh. So it was kind of like a win-win. Um, but it was one of those things that I felt like she was the first person to actually like, like listen to things. <laughs> Laughter and then immediately tears. Yeah. Just, what have I done? I mean, we've all been, we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> you look so much better with clothes on. That's what normally what it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but it was like I, I had a moment. I was like, okay, got a lot of good coping tools. She's like, the podcast good for you because you learn to talk and all that shit, and you know, kind of get it out there. Yeah. And then so I took a break, and when I came back, she's no longer on the app. Oh damn! We use it better help, were you? Mm, yeah, yeah, I use better help. And, and it's really good. I went through like three or four after Same. trying to find someone, and it would be this thing of like pitching some crazy off the wall, like like hypnosis, like whatever shit. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Or sure. they would like ask me questions, like when I'm actively talking about things, like about my mother or something. Well, do you think some of how you feel has to do with your mother? I'm like. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, yeah, I, it's yeah, like yeah. I told my last therapist so much. It's like a relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't just jump into a new one. It's like, think about how much I shared, how much like it takes out of you to share that deep and shit. And then re-sharing and then it all to, again is You have like, to rip it open again and yeah. give it to somebody else. Who, so you went, rather than go through that process, I'll just internalize and compartmentalize all this pain no. and let it fuel my body sculpting dreams no no actually <laughs> i i just i like to use humor on the podcast to talk about it oh, no, i'm fucking with you. I'm just joking. <laughs> she's getting serious now she's like no that's not what happened <laughs> wait, and i'm fine wait this isn't therapy right <laughs> now <laughs> none Shit. of us are fine uh, i gotta go i feel like every every podcast is kind of therapy it in is, some yeah, totally. it's a bunch, bunch of narcissistic people desperately trying to put their thoughts and feelings out into the world isn't it yeah so, it's like someone knows Notice me. Someone relate to this. Someone make me feel not alone in this shit. You know. I mean, that's why. That, that's why I structured the the special that way. The mm -hmm. you know, spectacular. It's the same thing. It was like it's a little bit therapeutic. You know, uh, those who haven't watched it, which I imagine will be all of your viewers. Uh, but check it out. There will be a link yes. in the description. Yeah, and it's free. Go check it out. I, I got offered money for it, and I refused to sell it to the platforms. I gave it away for free, which was. A terrible idea. I don't recommend that to anyone who is uh, trying to establish themselves. No, it was a great idea because, fuck it, we were on strike uh, during the SAG strikes. And I thought, yeah. why am I going to give this work to people who don't even want to value the work we already do? So, fuck yeah. them. And there's something special about producing it yourself and like putting it all out there yourself oh, yeah. and having full ownership. You get to make it the way you want to make it. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the point. Is like, I, no one would have let me make that special the way I made it. No, mm -hmm. no one. All these little moments are very self-introspective, you know, therapeutic moments of yeah. understanding and killing your own ego ego death that kind of stuff but um yeah it was kind of it served a purpose because you know my best mate pete killed himself this is where the po po podcast takes a really upbeat turn uh, uh my best mate pete killed himself and then three weeks later my dad died from his alcoholism so i needed to put that in there i had to redo parts and just be like how do i talk mm -hmm. about this and make it funny and make it a mm -hmm. process that not only makes people laugh when they watch it but also hopefully some of them might heal from it as well yeah that yeah. was the intention because that's kind of what you're doing too is like trying to heal that and then you're doing it creatively you're sure, like let's sure. take all of this negativity let's take all of this darkness and let's create something that isn't so dark exactly and get mm -hmm. a few extra tattoos you know to yeah. cope with the daddy <laughs> issues so it's <laughs> It's uh, a, a blend of both those things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you? You comedians as well? Do you do stand up? No, oh, I, I do not. No. We love going to comedy shows, though. That's one of our favorite like hobbies. Too. You're protecting yourself with a pillow. I'm Have actually, I upset you? No, you feel it's like my this... crotch because this skirt's a little <laughs> oh, short. Okay. So I don't know if like the camera's getting the crotch shot or if you're getting it. So I'm just I kinda, wasn't, it's ready. If it Laura's makes you feel any better, I don't yeah, have a habit ready. of turning up on podcasts and staring at people's vaginas. But hey. oh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, comedy shows like. 
like sign us up. That's like yeah. one of our favorite things to do. Like you're gonna have to come and see p- me while I'm here in Vegas. Please, I'd love see to. a show. Yeah, yeah. Bring some friends and I'll uh, sort out some tickets. We'll have some fun. Yeah, stand up comedy is like my pipe dream. I love, I love stand up. Pipe dream, as in you would like to do it, but you have yet to. Yeah, I can see you doing some stand. I can she see could, both of you doing stand up. No, she actually. could do it. I would just be on the corner going like, go, "You got this, bitch! Like, go, go!" You know. See, like, you would be the straight woman for her comedy act. Like, totally. you would be a great little double act. Have you seen um? You know the girls, uh, Corinne Fisher and Christina Hutchinson, yep. who uh, guys we fucked. They, yep. I love, I love them. They're very, very talented. And both of them do stand up, and often they do their shows together now. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe that kind of format could work. You never know. Yeah. Don't give up on your. Don't give up on her I dream. I just don't want her to look bad. That's yeah. all. I'm don't like, give hey, up like, let her do it. Come on. You'd be great. You'd <laughs> you, be great. It gives her something to bounce off. You know? Thank you. All yeah. right, you got the badge on your way now. Okay. Isn't that an interesting concept though? <laughs> that you'd be comfortable because you do. So you do uh, 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 online content. Do you do like mm-hmm. um, uh, mainstream porn or just only fans and your own content? Or um, I have done mainstream. So I was a uh, back in the day. I'm old now, but I was a very big like cam model so i i had a really big presence I'm on one of the big old now i'm super well, old not, like... not like it's one of the things that i don't personally feel like we were we were saying earlier like yeah. i feel better now than i did in my early 20s sure, but sure. in the grand scheme of people jerking off to you i'm old compared to like when you consider Are you in your like, 30s yet mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh okay yeah you're not old you're not No old. i don't feel old but it's one of those things where it's kind of like I do when you say you're super old and I'm 40. Oh. That makes me feel... <laughs> well, you don't look 40. That makes me feel dead. <laughs> Thanks for Hey, much. I'm right there with you. It's okay. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel I'm ancient. Saying, I'm only old in the terms of porn. I get you. Yeah, You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, overall, You're I a milf great. after yeah. the age of about 26, right? It's pretty fucking... No, I fucking... just skip to cougar. I don't, I don't do the milf <laughs> thing. Cougar, I have yeah. enough mommy issues. I don't need to be a milf, so... <laughs> hey, can we discuss that? Why is... American pornography so centered around wanting to fuck family members. What's oh, that about? Oh, God. I don't know. Is There's it not that. like that it's, anywhere else? No. It's like, just When I grew here. up jerking off, we like jerked off to pretty reasonably standard stuff. I mean, like, you not know. Not like stepsis, stepbro shit. All of this stepsis, stepbro, no, stepmummy. It's, it's like, yeah. It's all um, over. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not here for it. It's one of the funny things, like, about when I did go to shooting mainstream, because I was like, right. I didn't need mainstream, okay. but I kind of need a little camming break. And they offered me a little contract, like the whole Brazzers sure, sure, type sure, thing. Sure. And they're like, just do lesbian stuff like you do on cam and okay. be contracted. I was like, cool. You shoot enough, like, hiding behind a door, eating a <laughs> woman out while her husband is like, what's going on in there? Or yeah. <laughs> Oh, step sis, or all this kind of stuff. And it's just kind of like, I, I like to shoot weird stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that kind of weird. You know I what mean, I mean? that like, is pretty fucking weird that a husband weird. would notice that his wife was getting her pussy eaten. She's just like, while <laughs> she's just chopping up. There's nothing happening underneath this <laughs> uh, countertop. Like, you got to question the validity of that relationship in the first oh, place. Absolutely. You know I mean? No, absolutely. No, it gonna doesn't last. make any sense. <laughs> or, like, I have these scenes where I'm like, my my brother shows up with his new girlfriend and happens to be my ex-girlfriend. Oh. And so, of course, we fuck for We've Christmas. We've all been in that like, scenario, haven't we? We've all been in that situation. Happened to me this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, clearly, we don't talk much outside the holidays if he didn't know she was my ex. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. Except when you're fucking the same woman together, of course. <laughs> Oh, well, no, I haven't gone that far, but... Oh, that wasn't the scenario. It wasn't you and the brother having sex with the ex-girlfriend? Oh. No. No. Okay, okay. No, he was out of the situation. He left girl, her girl. with you and then... You leave You leave your Damn. girl alone with me. We all know what's going to happen. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Fisting. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Welcome to the casting couch. <laughs> Oh my goodness! There goes that. Oh. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the scenarios in the pornography are pretty fucking ludicrous, and yeah. you got to wonder where they come from. I think it's like the minds of a fourteen year old boy. Mm-hmm. A lot of it. That's what it seems like. Yeah. It's childish porn. Yeah, it is, and I think a lot of it has to do with the people Not to be who are writing child porn, which no, no one no, should no, be no, making. No. I want to no. make that very clear. No. But no. fuck pedophiles. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Come no, well, don't fuck them. Don't fuck them. No. Don't go anywhere near them. Keep them at arm's length at all times. Put them in prison. That's that's probably the best idea. That is, sounds like the best idea. Um, <laughs> fuck, I forgot my train of thought. That's what I do. 
but it's That's true. Crazy. Like, I mean, do people really love watching like these big like scripts that are written for browsers and stuff, or they just want to just fast forward straight to the fucking like? I feel like a I lot of know. people fast forward, but yeah. it's also like when you look at the people who are writing the scripts, it's yeah. like you know why they're written that way, but. <laughs> And they weren't written for that talent. Yo, listen, Let's put it that way. I just rewrote the scripts for the X Biz Awards um, for for Shri Deville, who's my co-host on the on the other podcast, and then also uh, Emma Rose. And the they, look, the the original script had, it had m- some movement, but a lot of the jokes were really like that whole fourteen year olds writing stuff. That's what it felt like. It felt like fourteen mm-hmm. year old boys. Yeah. Like, no, you're hot. No, you're hotter. <laughs> it's like they does jiggle this need to be their a script? boobs in brackets. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like. No, for real. I'm like, that's the script. All right, well, how about we make these women funny and what they are in terms of yeah. their characters as well, but also be sexy, but, you yeah. know. Anyway, so we rewrote it, and it was, it was a lot funnier and a lot better, hopefully. I think people enjoyed it. <laughs> but, yeah, when seeing those scripts, I was like, God, if this is a script for, like, an award show, what should be the you know, the, the most bougie and highfalutin aspect of this industry? Mm-hmm. No, no wonder I, the script's on set shit. Like, writing scripts was fun for me. I wrote a couple for browsers. I wrote one called Ginger Vitus. Okay. So it was a dentist scene, and she like had it. gingivitis instead of gingivitis. I like that. And yeah. it was because I got the like, pun. I heard yeah, it. Yeah, no, but it was, it was, I, sometimes I can't tell with my inflection of like how I'm speaking. But so the whole concept was that she was having these problems okay. because she hadn't been fucked by a Fuck. ginger because oh, she goodness. was also a ginger. So that was my her diet. full power hadn't been realized yet. It's like yeah. your like your X Man power gets yeah. comes to you when a ginger <laughs> comes in you. Yep, I love that. I love that with our redheaded yes. powers combined. Yes, suddenly can... you can shoot laser beams now out of your can vagina. Now we come. Oh, that would be cool Ooh. if I could shoot laser laser beams on my vagina. Vagina or butthole? Which one would you go through? Go for butthole. Two. Butthole. butthole. Always butthole. It's more nipples. practical. Nipples. Yeah, like, nipples. Like like in the the old movie i can't remember i think my friend casey calvert just did a uh uh uh, she just did a the boys uh (gasps) parody where there's a bit where the guy i just saw a clip she just posted and uh (laughs) the guy who's playing whatever the evil guy is in the boys you know the the sort of the main guy who turns out to be super evil Mm -hmm. the blonde guy and she's like laser my tits and he like (laughs) eye lasers her titties it's it's pretty majestic and magical (laughs) i'm gonna we'll watch it at some point but (laughs) Shout out, Casey. Oh, shout that. out. That's amazing. I love, I love, I think that porn should be funny. Cause when you think Agreed. about the, I've said this so many times, but that's how I've always looked at it. Cause it's like sex is ridiculous in and of itself. Sure. Don't be wrong. It's fun, but it's no, you're fun basically to be funny too. You should have fun with it. Simeon smashing genitals together and yeah. making weird sounds. It's hilarious. The yeah. sounds are the funniest shit. Mm-hmm. And the faces. Yeah. The faces. Oh, <laughs> have you ever seen your own cum face? Uh, yes, actually. In the, yeah, is it pretty yeah. good, or do you like practice in the um, mirror? I have. <laughs> I, I'll be honest with you. Like, so I have gotten good at. <laughs> I learned to moderate my cum face, so now I don't even know what my natural cum face is because I have like an O face that is like the standard crafted. O face. I have a cra- no, a crafted one, mm. a crafted one, and I know that when I'm really fucking, yeah. Sometimes the ugly one might come out, but I've never seen that one. But then when you just shove her face away, don't look. I don't do that. I'm not shoving women's faces into fucking... Stop breathing! That's not my thing. That's not what I'm into. Oh, it's I like looking things. into a woman's eyes when I come, actually. And I like seeing mm. her when she comes. Like It's like, a you know, hopefully you sink, mm-hmm. sink it up. It doesn't always happen, of course. Yeah. But, you know, when it does, there's that magical moment where you're like... Fireworks! It's like when yeah. two gingers come in each other. Just you, like, oh. you both go cross-eyed and suddenly... <laughs> Laser beams <laughs> coming yeah. out the whole thing. <laughs> Drool. It's but awesome. I, maybe my favorite part of sex <clears throat> is the moment just immediately after where everyone's like... Mm. That Spent. bliss. Yeah, that dopamine bliss where it's just full honesty and transparency mm-hmm. and there's no airs and graces and you just lay there like, oh, that was great. When it yeah. was good, yeah. You Laying just, like, there in your own cum. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> just laying there with cum dribbling down your leg and you get a, go and get a wet cloth, you know, you can put it under some warm water and you like, you know, rinse it out and then come oh, back yeah. and mm-hmm. wipe up but the cheese. I'm saying, I'm no saying the right after, sometimes you just need a second. Just to let just, it drip on the inside of the thigh. It. Yeah. Do you it's like, good. do women like that or is it like, oh, it's going to get on my sheets, don't let it drip. I don't give a fuck, I can wash my sheets. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I was like, fuck how, do you, it. how do you feel about fuck the post sex cum drip? I'm usually the one that runs and grabs a towel. Usually. Oh really? Yeah, I'll grab the towel and I'm then. Sorry. Have Hang you got on. a partner? Have you got a partner? Hang on. Yeah. Wow. What? Yeah. You need to train that motherfucker just, to go and get the towel I for was you. About to say, I was like, you. Well, no, he gets the joint. Oh. So there's a there's we both have different like 
rolls. He rolls up the joint. Yeah. Maybe I get the towel. Oh gosh, right, the like towel's that. easier. I mean, you guys want me to do more work, I will. But I'm just picturing no, I'm them kidding. laying there like rolling a joint and you're like, can you get this spot for me? And he's like, no, nah, not till I'm done rolling. <laughs> Absolutely not. Let me get that key. Pass that key over here. Oh, while hell I'm yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, oh you got come in the key for him. <laughs> Oh, well. Extra protein. Just yeah. smoke it up. <laughs> exactly. Smoking your proteins. Wow, that sounds like <laughs> something we'd see on one of those fitness TikTokers. Oh, God. If we, you didn't know it, bros, there's another way to take protein into your diet. Oh, there's so many we wild heard it hits claims faster. about fitness. <laughs> like, it's you, it's insane. You it's know what? So I did hear, um, so we just did this on one of our, uh, uh, can I can I plug my podcast or yeah, not? Can please, I mention it? Yes, please. So this podcast, I didn't want to be disrespectful by saying no. the name on yours, but uh, a Comic <laughs> Cougar Convo is the podcast I do. And it's with dope. Cherie Deville. Uh, he was like MILF of the year and fucking performer of the year. You know, she's, she's done very well. She's so pretty too. She's amazing. She's gorgeous. gorgeous. Gorgeous soul as well. Nerd like us as well. I don't know if you're a nerd too. Are you like this? Is this all you as well? No, not quite. But I mean, I admire it. This okay. is my brain. I, I think it's my amazing. Brain I think it's beautiful. I respect I your take... collection of children's toys and <laughs> animated cartoons. See ya. You fucking all right. <laughs> He's like, you nerds. fucking loser. Harry Potter for the seventh time. <laughs> Yo, again. I met Harry Potter a week ago in what New York. Yeah, fuck? I met Daniel Radcliffe. Anyway, <laughs> so, as a, as a, like, what, explain. Yeah, I'll, I'll get there in a sec. Yeah. I had this really weird day. <laughs> But so on the on the Comic Cook Convo podcast, we did an episode on beauty and we were talking about various beauty standards and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, it came out like that we talked about bodies oh. and how you take things in. That I know where you're going yeah, with Yeah, that when if a guy is taking steroids and he's like yes. taking testosterone mm -hmm. and he comes inside of you, that can like jack your female, like your testosterone levels as a woman. Um, and then a lot of women in porn have now started getting lots of like dark hair and facial hair because... Of, and it was a makeup artist yes, who told her about it. That's what Cherie said on the pod. Yeah. I watched that clip and that I was all like. All these girls in porn are getting fucking facial hair because they're taking all these meaty injections of testosterone <laughs> directly into their vagines. <laughs> Who Isn't knew? that insane? That Who is knew so that, that I wanted be... to bring that up today too because I saw that and I was like, I have to ask. Like, I want to know if your health insurance would cover that, would cover the laser treatments because technically that yeah. is a career, like it could be like affect your career. So you're like, well, I mean, it's a, it's a hazard of it's, the job. Well, it, technically you can write off laser hair treatment yeah. if you're in the industry. Even so, more I mean, so if hey, you've taken boom, yeah. 12 <laughs> like ounces of... of Premium testosterone <laughs> cock. You know what I mean? That's so wild. And, yeah. and like, Holy I feel like shit. so many people are on it now. Like, everybody on, look on like testosterone. On, on test, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or even just like basic, like, fitness people. And it's like, and all of a sudden they'll just be like, and they're like, it's just protein. You're just like, bro, oh, it's just bro, consistency, bro. It's just that you need to have that grind set. You got to get up at like 3 a.m. and you yeah. got to like have a protein shake. And yeah. then you're going to have a pre workout. Then you're going to have another protein <laughs> shake. And then you're going to do push ups. And it's like, I'm that's so not hard right now, Molly. Honestly, <laughs> just like, I, you really put me there. I was, I was a. Uh, feeling your yeah. raw masculine energy thank you i have a lot of it inside and, of me yeah not from testosterone cum loads but <laughs> <laughs> i've never done steroids i've never tried it it's not really my it's not really my thing are you interested i mean i'm kidding <laughs> this is the drug dealing feature of the show ladies and gentlemen where we sell drugs to Just our guests saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I did do, you know what I did get from a guy who I used to work out with? I used to go and uh, clang and bang with this dude at North Hollywood Golds. And uh, he would he would take, he took everything. He would do like whatever, HRT shit or whatever that the mm -hmm. hormone test, you know, replacement oh, yeah. stuff. All, shit. all that shit. And then he'd do steroids and stuff. But he gave me a, <clears> an <throat> injection that I did for about six months that makes you tan. Did you know about the tan one? What? It's like you don't need sunshine or anything. It basically jacks up your melanin, your melanin production. Wow. So you just get a really tan. good tan. That's and if you crazy. do too much of it, you get a little too dark. You look <laughs> a little bit, maybe you're... Like Rachel Dolezal. Maybe like, I've never heard of this. Dr. Holy shit. Umar is going to come wild. and knock on your door and have a word with you because you are definitely fucking misrepresenting yourself. That That's pretty but, amazing because, yeah. I mean, I have... They don't know who Dr. Umar is. I like how the only black man in the room is laughing. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. He's a... <laughs> I'm like I'm I'm curious though because that's pretty cool because like growing up I have like lighter legs that never tanned evenly with the rest of my body does the right. body all tan whole thing babe 
whole thing. You're going to get on some injections? Even it. those little toesies are going to get Fuck a little, yeah, little bronze. Yeah, Let's yeah. go. So <laughs> there you go. So now I'm the drug dealer, I guess, technically. <laughs> I, hope, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Because there's someone like, I, I've done um, like muscle shoots before and then they're like, you know, get a spray tan. And I'm like... <laughs> Right. When I get a spray tan, like the first time I ever did, I was like, I looked at myself in the mirror. I was like, this feels wrong. Like, yeah. cause I am very, I'm like translucent yeah, in the best yeah. of times. <laughs> like if I, if I get any sort of tan, it's just like a, like a skin color. Yeah. yeah like yeah. just a color. <laughs> Radiation <laughs> is called clear. Yeah. <laughs> Albino is your tan state. That's your default tan state. Yeah. yeah it doesn't, it, like nothing ever works. And the one, like I got a spray tan for the first time. She did contouring like on the abs right, and everything. Right, right. And when I showered it off, I just felt I was like, "This isn't even me." And then at first, you're like, "Okay, this is cool. I can see all my muscles and stuff." And then it starts flaking off, right? Like after a couple days, yeah, and then yeah, you just feel strange. Off. You're just like you got all these little gross. patches all over. Yeah, you. yeah, it's not. Look a little bit like a shitty toilet tissue. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) Yes, that's how I look. Or a shitty wipe, and it's just all over your head. It's it's not good. I'm clean, but I don't feel it. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. (laughs) Do you edit this, or do you take this out? You do? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask a question you can always cut out if need be. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, uh, (laughs) Because I know a lot of people in the space of sex work keep their private lives private. Obviously, I've just seen your Jack fella outside do we acknowledge yeah. that he exists yeah okay cool all right he's cool. real no no, yeah. no but not everyone wants <laughs> no, to sometimes you know, i wonder because i'm just like i look at him and like <laughs> what i was but gonna say because a lot of girl in pornography <laughs> f- fabricate that they don't have partners because that sells the allure a bit more to their client base do you that know what used I mean? to be me my ex made me hide him right so nobody knew the shit i was going through until it all came out right, and then right, it was right. blackmail and all this stuff so now i'm just very transparent with everything okay. all right, cool. shit over you. all mm-hmm. right so she's got this jack fucking boyfriend who's outside just seen his shoulders and again <laughs> i'm not even homosexual just european but i still got a little hard just seeing the back of him <laughs> a half chub um I get hard all the time, so I'm so <laughs> Her clit just stands to attention, yeah. which all the like, steroids <laughs> mean it's like about three foot long now. <laughs> That's a thing. That's a thing. So it is giant <laughs> clits. Oh man, I've Big seen some. Clits. I've met some. So the when you, you you obviously your fitness thing is like a big part of who you are now. Did you date dudes with jack bodies pre? getting super into fitness yourself or have you noticed that now that you're in a physical kind of place of feeling very proud of your muscle and your body Mm -hmm. that you have to date someone who is as dedicated to their physical form like that that's interesting i had a similar conversation with another girl who does bodybuilding and like Mm. power lifting and stuff and i was like for me before i had no i didn't think anything of myself and like with my last relationship, it lasted like. Do, all do you mean sorry? What so no self uh, worth? D- self worth? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Stripped away, and uh, so I never really cared that much about any of that kind of stuff because I didn't care about myself. But when I look now at like how much work I've put into just sure. my body, like it takes a lot of work sure. and it's exhausting. And I kind of like look at it like if I'm. If you're not willing to put in, like, it's not like I would need, even if he, like, lost a bunch of his muscles, which he's done. He's had, like, shoulder repair and stuff like that, couldn't train. And he got really tiny, and it was so cute. And it was like, well, I love him, not his body. But if if I was to be single again, I don't feel like I could really, it's not that they'd have to be super. You couldn't go back to the normies. No, no, it couldn't be that they'd be (laughs) super, like, fit or anything like that, because I'm fine to go to the gym by myself and do that kind of training. But there has to be a little bit of care about, like your body yeah, for me yeah, 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 yeah. just because i was also with someone for so long who just treated it like shit and then by proxy you're in that relationship you have no one else around side of you and i effect. treated yeah, myself yeah, yeah, like yeah. shit yeah, I and i was it. like I, d- I just can't like because there's something that's it's not an extension okay. of your own se- yeah, se- yeah, yeah. Uh, sense of self-worth that you now have you'd mm-hmm. like to see that in other people you want to see your partner caring for themselves because that yeah. reflects a healthy if, mental yeah attitude even if well. they're just like i really like hiking and they never went to the gym i'm like cool you're doing something that's physically active you're doing something right. that's like good for you and that's like looks, it looks different to everyone not everyone's going to go lift right, right, weights right. or you know whatever mm-hmm. but unless they're su- and then it goes the other way though because there's like a little arc because when they get really jacked like that's se- too much so, and all the steroids then they're like probably not meant to be like worth like, a, like yeah. those people that like are you like- gotta have a neck yeah. necks are important to me <laughs> you don't want you all those fucking mean? horrendously acne ridden back because they've been shooting up so oh. many fucking steroids oh stuff like that 
Goodness. This person doesn't listen to this anyway, and <laughs> I hate this person. So there's this guy I know, and he does a lot of steroids. And you wouldn't know by looking at him. Yeah. He's just a little pussy-ass bitch. But his back looks like a pepperoni slice. That's pepperoni oh, back, like, huh? It the is. one you've told me about. Yeah. You know that. I don't know him, but I know of him. But you know Pepperoni back. There's probably yeah. even an audience for that as well, though, because there are women who just love pimple popping. Do you oh, know yeah. What I mean? Can you imagine? It's a kink, like, right? Yeah. For everyone. There's something for, for everyone. everyone. Yeah. yeah. There's so- <laughs> well, if you like, you know, if you watch it enough, maybe you'll like there it. There are kinks for everyone available. I get what you're there saying. Are, There's yeah. something for everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you yeah. have any kinks? I do, yeah. I like a good ankle. I'm really into an ankle. Really? Yeah. A cankle like or not an ankle? No, I fucking hate a cankle. See? That's not an ankle. Exactly. I like a shapely ankle, a nice dainty mm. ankle. I'm really into that. Uh, other kinks. I mean, that's not that's not really that out there. You know what? I've been, <laughs> no, like, but that's that's actually unusual because normally you hear like feet if you're gonna go. I ankle. was gonna you say with my ex, I've never been a huge <clears throat> foot person, but then I did suck on some toes with my part with my ex fiance. And I love sucking on her little dainty toes. They were nice, like when you're fucking the shower. So when you've mm-hmm. got a foot in your mouth. Oh, I've done that. I did yeah, that with Marie. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. sucked her toes because she liked and it. And it's not necessarily just like the toes. It's just the concept of like, I want every part of yeah. you to be stimulated right now. Yeah. You know, that was hot. Um, well, so if I someone's kinks, into it, question. like I'm down to like do it. If I'm there to fuck you, it's kind of like, well, how can we elevate this? You mm. know, and even if it's not my thing. Giving people pleasure, I think, is one of my things. Yeah. So I'm like, she. I knew she liked her toes sucked. So I just fucking hawk. <laughs> and she was like, Whoa. <laughs> You got to make sure you have a little wash before it, though. You don't want any cheesy toes. No, you're not oh, looking God. for that. No, baby wipe Or at least shit. get a good wipe down. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Get in there. No, in no. Wash them. I refuse. Sorry, <laughs> baby wipes do not do the level of cleanliness that we need. That is not enough. Yeah, that's true. But my, I guess true. the rest of my kinks are pretty... Um, They're kind of vanilla, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I will... Encourage, I've done lots of kinky shit with different women who wanted to do all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. The only thing I don't <clears throat> want to do is I'm not into yellow, I'm not into brown. You know what I mean? Like I won't let people mm. pee or shit on me. And uh, But I have pissed on a woman before. Yeah. Yeah. How was that? It was all right. She was just, you know, she was, uh, she was um, into it and uh, she asked me to pee on her in the bath. So I did. And then afterwards, I was like, it's "All right, well, place to do it. you got to take a shower before we fuck, though." So she was like, "All right, and I'll be fucking my own urine." It was kind of weird. Don't yeah. skip the feet. Yeah, we didn't last very long. Yeah, we didn't last. Yeah. Very long. I actually broke up with a girl because of her dirty feet. I was dating this. Um, I was dating this Bye, girl bitch. who was a yoga instructor and a stripper at you know Jumbo's Clown Room in LA. Have you ever been to it? No, mm, but it sounds, sounds fun. Cool. It's fun. I dated a couple of girls from there, and this one girl, she was she was very sexy. She was maybe a little self-absorbed, and then and then she used to turn up, and she would be like gorgeous, but then just fucking like get into my bed with these disgusting fucking feet. Oh no, you can't get into the bed with icky feet. Yeah, it's just like, like if you dirty. have icky feet, just wash them before you get into bed. Exactly. Ugh. Anyway, so I'd have to change my sheets every time she was over because there would be like these like dirty little foot stains on the on and the bed. And it's stripper from feet, so it's stripper and yoga, yoga instructor, feet. like just like sweaty. All, that's a lot of foot dirty stuff. Foot. Yeah. yeah, so that didn't last Oof. long either. <laughs> some see some guys are really into that, and they'd be like, "All right, baby, let me clean your feet with my mouth." Sounds you know? fucking disgusting, but you I'm know not what? into it, but. If someone wants to rub have, dirt on my feet and send them a video being like, suck this off my toes, I'm I'm down to do it. There but you go. I don't want. I you don't do it for that. money. That's the same. I, see, <laughs> I feel like a sex worker in a lot of ways. <laughs> Technically, I have been one at points. I know I'm adjacent to the industry, but I feel like a sex worker in the sense that if someone else wants to do something, whatever it is, oh, I want to do role play. I want to do some DDLG stuff or whatever. I'll do whatever you're into, even if it's a little fucking out there. But um, me, myself, I'm more like, no, I'd write, you know what the biggest turn on for me? It's fucking someone that I'm really into. Mm -hmm. Like, Matt, that's always been the best sex for me is like people I'm passionately, madly in love with. No, it is because you can have the best connection that way. And it's just like you're fulfilling the dream, you know. Also, it happens very infrequently is Mm -hmm. the honest truth. Yeah. Um, You know, over the course of my life, I did a documentary, another documentary for BBC about sex addiction called Confessions of a Sex Addict. And it was like an immersive documentary where we tried to revisit as many of my like 700 plus partners and find out if I was ever capable of love and blah, 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 blah. And I did stand up about the whole experience as part of the process. It was a lot of fun, but... Um, uh, with that, I realized I was looking at the list. I was like, God, the, the, with the sheer number of sexual escapades I've had, the fact that I can probably count on one hand the women that I've truly been madly in love with, that makes it a kink. It's almost like yeah. 
fucking because someone I'm madly into it's so infrequent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 No, I, I feel the same. Like it was, it's those situations where there's all, it's, I've fucked a lot of people and that was part of my ex's kink was me fucking other people. Oh, okay. Wasn't, wasn't my thing. He was a cock, was he? Did he like seeing kind you do of, it or not, did he just. Not in the way that most people are into cuck situations because most people it's like if this is the thing i'm into it okay. i'm happy when it happens and here it was just like no matter what is happening this person isn't happy if i don't want to do it and i want to be exclusive to them that's no good if i go out and fuck someone oh maybe i enjoyed it too much so then that's a fight there's just like this constant no matter what i tried to provide it was a no-go and how, you did, know? That, how did that make you feel uh disassociated so <laughs> You know, not not great. So, um, not that type of cuck situation because normally you hear about it in a way, and I've like role played it with fans and stuff before. Yeah, yeah. That's like they're very into it and they're happy that it happens. Oh yeah, and, oh, Cherie yes, makes a please. huge amount of money um, uh, roasting men's tiny cocks. That's like oh, a big yeah, part that's, of. That's, yep, which is insane to me. Yep, the concept that if you had a small cock, you'd be what like, what do they call it? That SPH, really SPH, sh- yeah, small what? penis humiliation, yeah. wow. whatever they yeah. call that. I don't know, but mm-hmm. it's like I've heard it from you. You yeah. know, people love it. I do so. a good job, don't I? Yes, you do. Thank you. Of like roasting, how would you roast a <clears> tiny <throat> penis? Let's g- g- give me a I've, little, a little. Oh, that's much too big. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is. Is that too big? That's probably an average. This? Isn't that like an average penis? <laughs> That's too big for it to be an SPH. Okay, all right. Yeah. Let's get a little... Uh... I've called them things like a Tic Tac. You know, I said that I would, you know, like, I'm trying to think. All right. Um, if I put that in a bag of rice, I'd never find it again. There you go. You can have <laughs> yeah. that one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's really yes. good. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I'm having a hard time thinking of it off the back. I'm kind of nervous now. <laughs> I normally do this like in the privacy of my room. You know those like... Costco frankfurters, those little hot oh, dogs. If I've, you I've... cut one of those up into twelve pieces, <laughs> your cock still wouldn't be I've, as big as one of those I've pieces. I said that about a Vienna sausage. Nice Vienna <laughs> sausage. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you have a penis that you should be in borrower huge. porn. Yeah. Is that too niche? Make- Do you even know what a borrower is? No, what's no, a- what right. is no, that? No, right. I realized Tell it was going to work. A borrower was, was a TV, a children's TV show about <laughs> humans that were about this big, and they used oh, to collect thimbles. And, I read the books. And they had like they would have they like, had books about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I read those, they were from yes. a series of books oh, called <laughs> the Borrowers, and they're basically they're basically like the what about uh, Gulliver's Travels, right? Yeah, you know yeah, Gulliver's yeah. Travels, the yes. people of Lilliput, the tiny mm-hmm. people. <laughs> But if you have to explain it that long, it's probably no, not going to work as a roast joke, that, is it? Like, that just threw me back. I was like, I'm going to have to yeah, figure that out and yeah. work that into something. You've got borrow a cock, bro. <laughs> but you can have that, guys. You can take that away with you. We yeah. all know how much I love making content. And one of the most important things for quality videos is lighting. But who wants the same old boring ring light? You can upgrade from basic to adorable at kawaiilighting.com with code TWND for 10% off. This podcast is lit by Kawaii Lighting's star-shaped ring light. There are also heart and kitty cat options to make you feel as cute as these lights look. Kawaii Lighting has many RGB options, which you'll have seen use in many of my videos and photos. Don't be basic. Stand out with Kawaii Lighting by using code TWND to save 10% and help support this wholesome pod. Let them know we sent you. Borrow. You got borrow a cock, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Are there any like books out there for people to be able to like get someone with a micro penis? Like, because there's people with micro penises out there yeah, that yeah. don't even want to go and get naked in front of women. But like, are there books out there? Like, they're like, your penis is beautiful. Like, no. talking about mm-hmm. the micro penis. I don't think so. I feel no. like Come on. That would be quite an investment into like- the publishing of a book that's probably going to appeal to a quite a small market, I imagine. Like, <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> but no, for real. I mean, how, how how commonplace is my? Well, you guys can or tell like me more. How about to I blow a tiny tiny cock? Like I've seen a couple micro penises. Videos. I compared this one guy's penis. You see those little rubber things there from the nineties that yeah. you flip them inside yeah, out. Yeah, That's yeah. what I compared his dick to. Wow. One of those so, button things. That just like don't. a button mushroom. So it was big head, no shaft. <laughs> like he was all balls. All balls. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> it is interesting. I think I think I've gone through life with a bunch of um, understandings of what hum- what humans are like or what humans experience that are completely fucking wrong and mm-hmm. only based on my own personal experience. I didn't think that penises on average were that small i didn't think that there were this many cocks but i've heard that the average <laughs> penis is pretty fucking tiny right yeah 
Yeah. Wow. No, it's, it, it is I fucked a lot of small surprising. Ones. And it's kind of funny because a lot of, I mean, I have two, but mostly big ones. Um, Hang on, though. Now, wait, wait, wait. When you, when you fucked a small cock, how do you, A, tr- like, not just, I, I guess the concept is, like, if I, a, a, a tiny penis that you can't really do a lot with, mm-hmm. are we talking like that sort of big, right? Okay, so, yeah, I like that. Because, like, average is, what, five in this country? Or it's, like, five and a half, six in Europe, I think. That was my ex. Yeah, that's and that's full erect. That's fully erect. Oh, that's a small cock. So when you yeah. got a cock like Imagine that, Imagine being like, on what? top. I didn't even know why people would get on top. Because I'd get on so top, and really it's just like... push down and, it and like, hope that you can get a little stimulation. No. And then also you can lean forward and rub your clit up against his belly, so at least you can get some, <laughs> that some works. kind of joy out of it, right? That works. That's why a lot of women in porn fuck dudes with pouches i see a lot of the the porn boyfriends are either like yours they're either like fucking jacked mm. or they're the opposite of the scale they're kind of like bald men with beards in their like 40s and 50s who have got like a paunch mm-hmm. and potentially a lot the of dad money. bod right <laughs> yeah. mm. not even dad like yeah. like like a little heavier set like old beer drinker pudgy. yeah a yeah because they're gonna be, always be super grateful they'll do whatever the fuck the woman wants mm. yeah and then also you know that paunch just rubs up against and the, maybe he's a really good cook too you know what i, I mean I don't, like yeah, a yeah, chef yeah yeah i don't think my ex really had the paunch because he had more of like the alcohol belly right and then i was much <laughs> longer so when you were rubbing your clip up against that I belly couldn't. you were just like, i'm just rubbing up against the misery of his you could hear existence it rather than yeah like because yeah. oh, it was just dude. a bunch of beer yeah. or whatever. But one of his favorite things to do was <laughs> your fupa is splashing, bro. Yeah. <laughs> one of his favorite things to do was not fuck me because I don't think he was into me at all. I think that's why he liked me to talk about dicks so much. Retroactively thinking about it later oh, yeah. on, discovered that in therapy. Maybe so, I need to think about. It. I've been talking about dicks this entire podcast so far. Okay. Oh yeah, I don't mind. I it love happens. About dicks. But the fun thing is, he would have me lay opposite the bed from him. So think like a catty corner house, but we're right. both facing each other just using a vibrator talking to him about dicks and making up scenarios of people i had fucked that i hadn't even fucked right, right. and just like make it up like worse and worse and then just jerk off while staring at my vagina but not staring at my vagina like most of the time it would never be eye contact and it would just be me <laughs> laying there for like 15 or 20 minutes while he was jerking off talking to him about dicks and not coming <laughs> Yeah. That sounds like a really healthy relationship. I'm glad that, it was so healthy. I'm glad that ended. That sounds pretty uh, miserable for you. Yeah, that's fucking weird. <laughs> that's really weird. I know. Damn. To each their right, own, anyway, right? Anyway. It's yeah. Like... I'm sorry this ex has had so much um, air time today. I apologize for, no, it's okay. <laughs> for going down that line of questioning. Oh, how, no. or, uh, so wait, how big is how big is too big then? So if this is, we've got the average. At what mm. point does a penis start being Well, I'll say this. I mean, I have like a man right now with a very big dick. What's very and big? What do you consider very big? Tell me how many s- inches. Almost seven years. I've never measured it, but it's maybe like that. Oh, that's like a, a what is that? Like a 10, 11? 10? No, no, no. Maybe like 10. But like, it never gets easier. Like, it always is. I think 10 huge. inches is pretty big, yeah. I'm like, is it wide too? Yes. Yeah, the girth. You've seen the down. nose. Like, we've heard this thing about noses. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> well, they feel like they kind nose, of like yeah. go in like. That means absolutely nothing. That's not doesn't? true. Doesn't? Okay. No. Well, we've well nose, heard. nose is a bigger indicator than feet. Oh, really? Yeah, it has. Yeah. But none of them really matter then? None of them matter that much, but... You have the tiniest nose and still have a big cock? Watch every one of your male listeners just doing their nose like reps every day. Just <laughs> no, like, they're... Yeah. Can you make a nose grow? <laughs> get a nose job. You no. can get a nose you job. Could. Yeah, the just reverse Serrano de Bergerac. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it never gets easier. Like I'm saying, like I always wonder if like one day it'll like just... Not be. It'll just be like a cavern, and it'll just be like. Yeah. Oh, maybe you have a shallow vagina. Maybe like your maybe vagina well. is like yeah, because you're quite petite. You're a small lady. Yep. Mm-hmm. And if he's got a ten inch cock, that is a big size penis. Yeah, it's yeah. like where does it go? I've, you know, you yeah. know when you think about halfway I've, in. There's that's, so many porns I've seen of these from? tiny little go? girls, right? And they have the <laughs> biggest <laughs> dick. Rednecks. Wow, that is a throwback. <laughs> that was the first. <laughs> A good single song. I ever got on CD. Really? Yeah. No way! Cotton no. Eye Joe by the Rednecks. That's that a was great song. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. I'm I'm intrigued because like look that cock up there that model whose model is that of who? That's a big cock. Yeah, that's about the size. Oh, that's 
Oh. Oh, yeah. That's not 10 inches. That's like no. eight and a half, nine. That's probably like eight and a half, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a good See, now that's a great it. size penis, right? Mm-hmm. Is that the perfect size penis, would you say? Yes. Can we bring it into shot? Yo, DJ, yeah. can you bring pass that? Bring him in the shot. DJ, grab the, don't be weird about it. It's all right. It's just got a bow tie on it. By the base. By the base, yeah. yeah. Just like yeah. That. yeah. Thank you, DJ. <laughs> that's a pretty good size. That's a great size mm-hmm. cock. I love the eyelashes. Wow. Yeah, it's beautiful. But it is cut. See, my cock is exactly like that. With Except a hood, like Batman. it's not quite as thick as that. It's slightly thin in that, just slightly. Mm-hmm. And it's got a hood on it. It's got a little big floppy hood because obviously, you know, European. Mm-hmm. So it's not yeah. uncut. <laughs> but if you go bigger than that, I feel like that's a, it starts getting painful and it starts turning women off. It, it could be. Have yeah. you ever broken up with someone because of a uh, too big? No. 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 All right. No. No, but my ex was super into big dicks. So I've had a lot of big dicks was he bi then did he like fucking dudes as well um well based on a story i heard from my pool boy after i moved out yes but um <laughs> during the time we were together no apparently. i like how your ex was like a stepford wife do you know what i mean yeah. like <laughs> shouting angry at your vagina telling you to talk about talk about all the other men you fucked <laughs> talk about all the other men you fucked and then secretly fucking the pool boy yes he was just a Stepford wife. He was. He so oh, was. That's so funny. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Was he a pill popper? Did he take like a lot of uppers and downers? Uh, alcoholic. They, yeah. Like he was literally, you literally were with a Stepford wife. Yeah. Instead of the work. martinis at three in the afternoon, he was drinking whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> worked out. But yeah, there's definitely a size when it's like, it's too big. And there was this one guy I was with once and it was just like the, the worst experience. And it was like, he knew he had a big dick. And so he would push it like drive it against the cervix like even when i'm like ow it's like oh you like it you like it and it's like if i hit it hard enough then the penis turns around and comes back out the other way yeah right like it comes up (laughs) just a loop dude that'd be sick (laughs) (laughs) the concept of it just peeking through the butthole like hey (laughs) (laughs) wow yeah i feel like it must like if you have a really really big dick like that as a guy that it must be hard for them as well because it's like i can't imagine most women are just going to be a cavern that accepts the whole fucking thing so you got to be like careful unless you're a dick like that guy i've then. seen every gamut of pornography and there are porn uh, you know porn movies where i've seen a dude with like and he's talking like 12 13 14 inch cock and it's fucking super thick uh and i do think like obviously in porn that guy's getting booked mm-hmm. and doing scenes and yeah, the but, outside, are, of that, but like, outside of that his life might be quite difficult sexual interaction might be pretty miserable yeah i i heard i can't remember what this guy's name was but he was like recorded as having the world's largest penis right and he was just like a really tall guy like really big dick Mm. and he's like that it was it sucked for him because women would hear about it and they would want to fuck him Mm. but then they didn't care past that and they're like well i don't want this all the time yeah so then it was hard for him to like find a partner or to make a real connection with anyone yeah 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 yeah. because he's like well do you just want to like try out my huge dick and then never talk to me again or do you want to like although the prospect of making anyone in your audience feel sorry for a guy with a gigantic cock i think it's going to be it's a slim to no chance <laughs> that they're going to go <laughs> well, can you know we- what i feel really bad for that guy let me uh, let me reach out to him see if he's okay yeah but well, can we ask the audience like is anyone listening that like has a big cock and is it really like is it a burden is yeah. it really hard to like yes, get is. romantic? Is it really hard? <laughs> is, it, is it really hard? No, I think you know, my, call my, in. Let us know. 702 900 6446. Call us. Want to hear about your big dick? Are we live? No. no oh, okay. Not. All right. We call in. <laughs> Just yeah, call in for next in. week. <laughs> Just call in for next week. Let us know. Yeah, because I'm intrigued. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing because everyone, you would think that people would yearn for the biggest cock yeah but that's, that's how they make it like and especially when guys are concerned about how big or small their dick is you would assume that there's like some reason but it's like going to the gym and training like to get women yeah it's like it's just gonna be other guys being like damn your muscles are so big like damn your dick is so big bro like it's not necessarily for women <laughs> you find out later around the office is you have a giant cock <laughs> And also, I don't want to like leave the ladies' uh, genitalia out of this because we talked a lot about dicks, and I think some of the guys might be feeling mm-hmm. a little, you know, a little insecure. Some of you lads, or maybe not, maybe very secure at this point. Yeah. But I've seen some fucking car crash vaginas as well. We should highlight oh, yeah. that it's not Let's just talk. weird dicks yeah. that are like. Let's talk about these wrecked pussies. Tell us. <laughs> what, what's the most wrecked pussy you've ever seen? The most wrecked <clears throat> or whack pussy? Wrecked. Oh, wrecked. I don't know about wrecked. I think in terms of like uh, uh, confusing. 
I've oh. seen like some really over overdeveloped labia that are really just descending like two regal theater curtains ready to be drawn back to reveal <laughs> You're like, I'm the still protagonist getting in there. of the story. Like, now I wish that someone oh. would get them like tattooed yeah. to look like curtains. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. 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 That is so or cool. what you should do is you tattoo a little orchestra that goes between on the perineum between the vagina Can you and the imagine butthole. How painful? So it looks like a little stage and a little orchestra oh, playing so and cute. then <laughs> Um, I've also seen, we talked about giant clits. Yep. So two girls that I dated who worked out a lot mm -hmm. and obviously had developed, you know, they were bodybuilders and they had like, had like big, long, engorged See, it's clits. not just men that do. Is that part test, of steroids saying. though mm -hmm. too? I think so. Yes. A bit. But it can also just be testosterone development. It doesn't okay. like, you just be from like, <clears throat> just getting fucking jacked, bro. It, it can be, yeah. but I feel like most of the time in most instances that I've heard, especially in the community, is like, it's not that they're going to talk about that they do it, but that is something that causes it to grow. Because you can, you can develop more testosterone, I guess, as you train, but there's a point where it's kind of like... It's limited. It's capped. Yeah. And also capped. some people just got like giant, just like some men have tiny penises, some have gargantuan cocks, mm -hmm. some women have big clits. Big yeah. clits. Oh, yeah. Or pretty. like a big cl cl hood. Like they all look so wildly different. It's yeah. like a little array of flowers you see them all next to each other. It's like, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe the scariest one I saw was like just on a, a, a much more elderly lady. I slept with this woman who was in her oh. 60s when I was like... 20 something Damn. wow how did yeah. that go uh <laughs> i was going through the motions to make someone feel good oh rather than there was no joy in it myself yeah really yeah yeah yeah, yeah. wow i fake coming as well i fake coming <laughs> i faked an orgasm so that i could finish so the how do you do that that's a guy. Oh, come. Let me go and pull this condom off and then run out of the room and oh, <laughs> you know, just fucking throw it away. Fuck. I always forget about condoms, man. Yeah. That, that yeah. makes sense. That's easier to hide than if there's just like no condom. Like I did come. Yeah, it's yeah. just not very much. I came earlier today. Like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's like with women, well, it's just so easy. Well, you did a good easy. deed. Yeah. That's awesome. That's good. Yeah. I mean, right I, don't, I don't know. Did I in the long run? Because then I never slept with her again. And she That's might have. That's okay. She probably knew that it was an, an experience I had enjoyed. So I didn't want to repeat. You threw her a bone. We get it. It's Literally all good. Literally and metaphorically. Yeah. yeah. She was, I mean, she was a very beautiful lady. She just yeah. like um, everything in the <laughs> outfit when we got home and the outfit came off everything changed the like because it all fell apart <laughs> yeah <laughs> was it like I compression she... wear and stuff like that kind there of there was Spanx. most definitely like no no she wasn't like a it wasn't like anything needed to be but yeah there, it was tight form fitting to hold uh, things in place as yeah. opposed to this is like a, a woman who hasn't looked after her body like she looked after her body yeah yeah. she wasn't uh, you know grossly overweight or anything like that no she just like just, things bra. happen when like you get boobs, older boobs like are, yeah. boobs are perkier in a bra you Gravi know what I mean gravity had taken its toll yeah and also skin elasticity if you don't moisturize she was white and so she wasn't moisturizing her shit on the regular you've got Whereas, to you know, that's unfortunate yeah you gotta do the whole body collagen Lather supplements up. all that stuff men as well a lot of men walking around with ashy legs they just don't yeah. know about it yeah yeah sometimes see somebody's kneecaps i'm just like Ugh. yeah <laughs> it's gross. Whereas because you are Flaky. literally translucent you have to be on top of that shit yeah Oh, Again. no. I lotion all the time. I have so yeah. many random lotions around the room because I'm just like dry. And, yeah, you know. That's true. She's got all the different scents. She's like, do you want this one? This is the newest scent. And I'm like, oh, yeah. nice. I see a lotion. <laughs> I buy a lotion. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> what else are you passionate then about? Because obviously you've got your work. I don't, I don't know why I'm interviewing you now. This is what's happening. So no, I, I would rather interview you. I actually had, I feel like I had another <laughs> question, but I think I, I overpassed it because you had... Um, Oh, oh, that was the thing. You do, you've done character voices. I do a lot of character voices. And I was yeah, wondering, yeah. like, what, do you have, like, a favorite character that you've done, or? You know what? Um, one of the favorite characters I did was, obviously, Ghost in Call of Duty. That was, that was a big one for me. That was in the Modern Warfare 2019 release, and then Warzone 1, and then COD Mobile. Uh, but then it also turned out to be one of the best and also worst jobs in my career because oh. like Activision is just a, a horrendous entity to work with and just awful human beings. So um, currently facing a bunch of federal court cases though. So you know, <laughs> uh, and uh, but yeah. So so that was great. Uh, it was great because I got to connect with um, a huge audience, but also a lot of veterans as well. I've got really big veteran following now oh, and, cool. and serving military, and those people were 
pretty great, the majority of the ones I've met. You know, a lot of them seem to see the world the same way as me. Yeah. If they come out of their service and they take mushrooms and they sort of go, oh, everything it was bullshit, it was all bullshit, mm-hmm. politics is bullshit, financial industry is all fucking, it's a big Ponzi scheme. Like, that kind of conspiratorial theory kind of, you know, growth. I like that shit. That comes, me too. And <laughs> and also there's a lot of facts and truth in most of it these days, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm not talking like the really outlandish shit, like there's Nazis on the moon that are controlling no. the Jewish space lasers. <laughs> I'm not that, but, you know... But the space lasers bit turned out to be true, didn't they? I love when the when when the st- the state of Israel was like, by the way, we got the Iron Dome, but we're going to upgrade and start using our space satellite laser ser- system. I was like, hang on, lasers have come up a lot this episode. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. There, there's a movie about Nazis being on the dark side of the moon. Yeah. Does anyone remember that movie? Have you seen that movie? No. Wow. Nazis on the dark side of the moon. No. I think that was uh, that was the other um, album by uh, uh, Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was, it was slightly less promoted. <laughs> they took all the Nazi references out, and then it was a hit. So definitely taken off Spotify, just like our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but I enjoyed that, and then I also, you know, what my, one of my fa- actually my favorite character I've ever done was Jack the Ripper in Record of Ragnarok. It's like a, it's an animated series, an anime series on Netflix. Oh, cool. Which is uh, just finished its second season, top trending all over the world. So Sweet. give it a watch if you enjoy nice. anime. I and will. And that was great because Jack the Ripper was such a fun character. He was fucking crazy. And also badass and like, mm-hmm. he was everything. Everything you want to play in a character. That's, cool. That's so dope. Villainous, uh, but also heroic. Yeah. Crazy, but also has immense you know wisdom and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's awesome <laughs> there's it's always been like more of a fascination to me like the villain arc characters way more of, interesting to play and, more interesting like to play more interesting to like read about their backstories are better mm. like you know i just i think that i hold more of an affinity to that that would be so cool to what would be them. your villainous um if you both of you ladies could become a villain how do you think you would enact your villainous kind of autocracy and, uh, um, you know, demigod status upon the world? What would you do? Would it be like mass genocide? Would it be, you know, uh, servitude of all humans? Or would you like be really specific? Like, I'm going to go and fucking blow up every pizza store in the world. <laughs> no pizza, pizza for humanity. <laughs> that would actually be no more amazing. Carbs. Yeah, that would be yours. <laughs> no, just, I love carbs. Yeah. The, the rule is just donuts. We have to figure out a way to make donuts healthy. So I can eat all of them mm. all the time. No, but um, <laughs> as far I, I have never really thought about what I would be as a super villain. But like, what would be your villain, villainous plan? You know what I mean? Like, how would you enact a villainous plan? Come on, I can, you got a little villain in you. Well, I can all see I thought that. was like, <laughs> it's not very villainous, but like making like everyone come at the same time in the world. <laughs> that, I mean, that would be like villainous. But like everybody, and then it's just like massive earthquakes because everyone's like, ah, and then there's cum flying everywhere. Is that but what you do when like you come here? Like, oh, you know? I love the idea and that eruption. you would have some kind of telekinesis slash tele- telepathic power. Yeah, and that, then boom. You're like the Professor X of synchronized is coming and you sit in your little seat <clears throat> that's good tap like you into that. the Go. machine the whole world ejaculate at the same time which would be really weird because some people would be hanging out with their grandparents at that time <laughs> and they're just coming imagine? with and their you, grandparents you're yeah. sitting there with Nana and she just <laughs> <laughs> that would be not Nana that would be wow. so great you'd have to hack into everybody's Alexa so you could watch because you know they're always watching and listening yeah, yeah. well you'd be you'd be able to he- you'd be able to hear it you'd be oh, I'd be connected it happened I just like to see like the video aspect i want to see it on screens i just imagine going like, through like, all the different countries yeah like one of the security rooms and it's just like the tiktok hashtag <laughs> after it like hashtag one come <laughs> yeah and everyone just posting I videos think i have of, a knuckle tattoo coming one, one come. come do you remember where, where where you were when the one come happened <laughs> yeah i know i was with my camera <laughs> i was it spit was, water everywhere yeah yeah <laughs> It's like nine eleven. Can you imagine you, you're working the nursing home? <laughs> There's so many casualties. The movie. <laughs> no. One come to end them all. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool. That's a great. That's a great thing in this backstory. And then you just leave Earth. I like the idea. You come down. It's so full of calm. Everyone come at once and you go. Like, <laughs> so you clean it up, and she flies away. It's too much calm. That's yeah. badass. Yeah. You, this time you roll the joint, and everyone else has to clean yeah. up. Yeah. You towel. guys take the towel. Wow, love that. <laughs> what about all right? So based on that, come on, what we got? <laughs> Top that. Good I luck, can't Molly. Now. Stop. I absolutely I can't. I wasn't even bad. I don't know. 
Fuck! It's too on the spot. You guys are making me nervous and shit, man. I would. You I, got I, I'll, this. I'll give you. I'll buy you some more time. I'll throw out my villainous thing. I think if I was going to be a villain, I would love to uh, have the ability to just spontaneously combust people that are really fucking irritating me. So if you know when you're like, ah, oh, I'm at Costco and I'm in the queue and that woman's like fucking around with her shit and she's actually, I'm going to put this back. Sorry, can you hold it while I go? And you just pff, no. Done. She just yeah. bursts into ash, mm. drops to the floor. Yep, Do you know like what I mean? That. You're at the self service checkout at Ralph's, and some guy is struggling with his fucking card, even though it says take your card out and put it back in again. And he's the why isn't this working? Poof. Oh. Ball of ash on the floor. But for some reason, they're like paying that. with five different payments, and it's like different like so weird. coupons, and, and you're like, yeah. what is going on? Self service checkouts is the biggest proof. That humanity stands no chance of success. I yes, think. no. People, people can't work them. And then half the time, even if you're going through, it's like there's something wrong with the machine. Yeah. And then you have to get someone to come help you anyway. But she's already helping everybody else who's there or here, <laughs> whoever, because everybody's machines having an issue. So it's like well, this would be so much better if you just had people working the damn lanes. Like it would make so much more sense. <laughs> Get people their doing? jobs back. Yeah, we're all going to be done with AI eventually. It'll just be like you walk up. Do you think what so? What would you like to buy today? <laughs> what would you like to buy today, Jeffrey? <laughs> mm. So yeah, so one <laughs> like one that. shot, one shot. I could just mm, and they just turn into ash. That would be great. There's a lot of people that I would like to. I'm do like that, a, yeah. I'm like a single. I'm like a very specific Thanos. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than half <laughs> of everyone in the entire cosmos, just specific people. I'm like. This one. And right no one's going to fuck with you because they just saw what you did. You know what I mean? They're like, all he has to do is point and yeah, I'm done. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, don't piss him off. That's great. <laughs> don't fuck with me. <laughs> you better laugh at my jokes. Can you imagine? <laughs> Audience members. <laughs> You're like, you just, who wants to laugh? I don't hear enough laughter in the back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I feel like almost less villainous and more like just want to fuck with people. Okay. Like when I think of like the ability to either like I, I like I would like to hear what everybody is thinking their deepest oh, okay. darkest everything that they're thinking in that moment because I could just use it against them I like your superhero power or your super villain power is effectively gossiping <laughs> like, <laughs> like- <laughs> Overdeveloped superhero but human that, gossip. That's just one that I thought because it's not even necessarily gossip. It's it's like when when you know what people really fear, right? And nobody really, for the most part, admits what it is they actually fear because most of the time they can't even admit it to themselves. Sure, but they, well, they don't even know. Some people don't hide even it from yeah, you. don't even explore. Yeah, well, it's like your brain like doesn't even allow you that introspection to Love figure it. out what that is. So if you just automatically know that. There's a lot you can do Your villain do name with that. is mm-hmm. the meanest girl. It's not like the it's like mean <laughs> yeah. girl's reference, but you're the meanest girl. <laughs> yeah. Or or just the ability like with the um, mean queen. Like, the mean queen. Oh, Fucking, let's go. I like you're that. Fire today. Bitch, let's go. I'm down. <laughs> I feel like that's half my content. Anyway, Shooting out to space. Scene. You could be on stage with Molly doing no, stand up. No, 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 no that's, stop there. This is what you do. Calm you play the straight man no. to her funny. <laughs> And then every now and then you throw in a little line and everyone goes, yo, that was a killer line. And well, that's like, just, mm, that's the you. style of like my life. I just, I am not, I'm not one of many words, but when I come in, I'm going to just, let's yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like we have so much fun together too, because I just don't stop talking for the most part. Well, we have a good dynamic. But one of the great things is that we play off of each other so well. And I feel like I even have more to say just when you're around, like when I'm alone, I'm so quiet. Like I, if I, I'll spend, I'll spend 48 hours not actually saying words. Okay. Like if yeah. no one else is around, but then she comes and then in. The first we have time content we talk days, and, and our voices are crackling. It's like, yeah. are you okay? It's like, yeah, I just haven't talked to anyone like a day. Had, I've had a week of isolation. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, we do, really. Now, hang on. Are you sick? No. Um, I just do I believe you? Because you got a dog, right? That's your dog, or is that your dog? No, the, my dogs, yeah. That's your dog. Yeah. You don't talk to your dogs constantly throughout the day? Uh, well, okay. So I don't consider that talking. <laughs> necessarily do you open your mouth and make sounds with your voice yes <laughs> well, there's a little bit of talking there. Well, just, I don't the want to be, be facetious but too. <laughs> yeah exactly fair, fair fair no but as far as like that kind of stuff like unless it's like like get off the couch like don't bark at him like that kind of stuff you know and I, I do talk a bit but definitely when I'm around people is when that definitely comes out more and sometimes the stuff that you say it just like blows me away <laughs> 
<laughs> That's because I'm really high all the time. So those are the only things that come up to my mind. We should be smoking right now. <laughs> we can. What, what's your, um, you know what I've wondered is um, when it comes to dogs, right? Mm-hmm. I love, I have a dog as well. I have a little rescue pity and she's my fucking world. Especially oh. after, after my breakup, she is literally my world. So uh, I love my dog more than any other creature on this planet pretty much. Apart from maybe my, my little niece. My little niece I love more. Whatever. You know, but she's naked, 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 yeah, naked. and my sister and my mom. Whatever. I got some people I love. But you know, my dog is my life, right? <laughs> yes, no, I feel you. And I've always thought, God, wouldn't it be amazing if she could speak? If I could converse with my dog. That'd be fucking dope if you could understand each other. And you see those little but then you see those videos on TikTok of like dogs that have been trained to be able to press buttons to go feed now. Oh yeah. Or, Party outside. Mm-hmm. Let's play. You know, <clears throat> shit like that. You know what I'm talking about, those little yeah. buttons, push buttons. And after watching those push button videos, I'm like, do you really want your dog to talk? Because part of the beauty is that they just fucking stare at you and listen. Yeah, and you just get to make up what they're saying. Yeah, imagine I was talking to my dog going, oh, God, I'm so glad you love me because, you know, I've had a really difficult day. And your dog just turned around and went, yeah, but you bring that on yourself. (laughs) Yeah. You'd be like, does your dog give you a reality check yeah, every other you're hour? You're supposed like, to be my friend. Oh my god, Jeff, shut the fuck up! Like yeah. you know, and you'd be like, that would that would ruin it. Yeah, Damn, that is crazy. I would love to like just do the same thing with animals, but like make it like where they're just playing music though, not talking. <laughs> just and then they just play music. Love that. That would be sick, I'm right? Actually, like they're just like all musically inclined now. You know, yeah. what you come called? home, your dog's jamming. You basically yeah. want to run one of those old school animal cruelty circuses. <laughs> That's really what you're trying yeah. to do. Would you like a hit? Sure, yeah, it's thanks. Sativa. What is it? It's a sativa yes. that keeps me alive. <laughs> happy, happy hour. I have had. I is have it a had sponsor? That po- no, no, they're not. Oh, you need to get a sponsor. No free sponsors. Um, well, we may possibly connect oh, I'm gonna, with. I'll connect you with Arrow. someone afterwards. I'm oh, heck yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Sweet. I uh, shout out to Arrow too because they're really badass. And, and I've had that face. thought with the with the dogs before because I get panic attacks. And my whole Thank body so shuts down. Laura's experienced a, a few of them, oh, and I have to go into my scary. closet. I have to sit in a fucking egg. Just I'm in an egg. I'm surrounded by long clothes. I'm panicking. I'm hyperventilating. There's tears. It's a whole fucking right. mess. And my dog won't come for me till after, and I'll be calling for him. And I'm imagining how much he hates me He's in that like, oh, moment. This bitch is yeah, fucking, and I just picture it's like, through it like again. oh, she's maybe if I'm far enough away, she can't fucking hear me, and yeah. oh, I'll just be really quiet and lay here, and I can't fucking deal with more of her crying into my head again. And I don't need to hear that when I'm in that moment. No. I just have to be like, oh, he can't hear me. Come He'll, here and be a fur yeah. pillow for fuck's exactly. sake. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes my dog, Nixie, she gives me looks sometimes when I'm like, come here. And she just looks at me and is like, oh, yes. my fucking. So you I know what they're saying. I can rip your throat out. You yeah. know that, right? If I wanted to, I could kill you now. <laughs> I'm Fine. letting you live. Yeah, this is exactly. my house. Here's a treat. <laughs> For real. If my dog turned on me, I mean, she's like Pitbull, Bully, Rottweiler mix. What mm. a sweetheart, huh? The softest. She's scared yeah. of like but if she you know, to. a cardboard box falling off her shelf. She's like, f- lose it. But if she decided to go for me. Oh, she can fuck me up. Like, she really? has yeah. the power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. But she's just a sweetheart. <laughs> it's kind of an abusive relationship, really. And just like constant fear. I'm in love with the constant fear of yeah. this female in my life who could destroy me at any moment and doesn't really tell me what she's feeling, which is why me and my ex broke oh up. Pretty much the same gosh. thing. <laughs> well, you can <laughs> have her dog. the dog, so <laughs> you can only handle one at a time. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. One, one lady like that in my life was enough, so. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I was meant to be married this year. You know that on March tenth, uh, May tenth, I was meant to be married. That wow. was actually one of my questions because in the special you mentioned a fiance, but then you mentioned here ex fiance. So I thanked so her at the end of, of it. So I called her my goddess and thanked her. You know what? Listen, <laughs> let me be real. I don't take back any of that shit because at that period of time, that is what she represented to me, and That's how you I'm felt. really I'm, yeah, and I'm really grateful for the relationship we had. Mm-hmm. There were parts of it that she helped me navigate. The loss of my friend, the loss of my father that I talked about, you know, a year and a half ago. I was super fucking miserable. I wanted to die. I was very depressed and very suicidally depressed, which no longer an issue for me, thankfully. Uh, Mushrooms are incredible. (laughs) Please take them if you haven't. Try it. Do five to seven grams and be on your own and cry and fucking trip internally and lay down in a bed and do something therapeutic. Unless you've got psychosis in your family, in which case don't do it because it can be dangerous. Um, And uh, and therapy, like, but but. She she really helped me navigate one of the darkest periods of my life. So yeah. irrespective of whatever else happened in our relationship, which I won't get into because yeah. that's private, 
you know, I'll never, I'll never not have gratitude for that person for helping me navigate that part of my life. Yeah. You know? And, and it's one of those things when those big life changes happen out of nowhere and they're so unexpected it's like sometimes your whole dynamic as a person just changes so what worked for you with a person a relationship a friendship whatever after those big events happen i'm so sorry i'm smirking and you realize you're being very serious and thoughtful and i'm sitting here smirking it's because i just got a little high off that yeah. wee pen and don't. just noticed and as you were going what kind of person you would be i was like i don't want to be a person whose trousers have ridden <laughs> two-thirds <laughs> up their leg i realized i look like a grandpa my ge- trousers have gone look at how high these bad boys are look at that <laughs> fucking half out my thigh <laughs> crazy and i was thinking about that and laughing about in my head so, as i was trying to be serious i'm so no, sorry no they're good i'm high too it's just, <laughs> just like my, sometimes I say, there it is shake All right, it out. Oh, there we go wait there we go. your belt is so cool oh thank is you it's like, a little old leathery that's Ooh. dope yeah thanks okay thanks. So like for a second see now i'm high you stood up and it was shiny in the back oh, and yeah. i thought it was one of those iridescent type what, my things back was shiny <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, he bell was. the back of the belt <laughs> because this was reflecting off of it i was like you thought i had like a cool crazy <laughs> rave belt going on hey i tell you what i went raving the other night i went to see chase and status you know the drum and bass producing duo have you heard of them no i haven't fair enough it sounds they're, familiar they're, they're but... newly blowing up in america but they've been around for a long while in the uk and I used to go to a lot of drum and bass clubs and we used to like fucking rave hard, you know what I mean? Take all the molly, all the ecstasy <laughs> and go out see eight shit. And uh, I went there and everyone in the audience was predominantly like 20 to fucking 35 maybe, most of the people. They were like drum and bass heads. And they were fucking boring. People in LA, people in America don't know how to dance to drum and bass. What is wrong with these people? What were they doing? Just fucking standing there. It was so frustrating. And me, a 40-year-old, and my 47-year-old friend Ben were like raving hard, just going like Did going you say your for 74 it. 74-year-old friend named Ben? No, 47. Damn, but I heard it backwards. I do, have, I do have one of my best friends who I just saw in New York. It's called Mama Rose. Is 90 years of age. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. What? I know some really cool older Dude, people. I'm going to introduce you to my grandma. She's 94. She's if a badass. If she's cool and fun, she's I will talk dope. to her. Here's what I learned. Like, I, I, I live most of my life not being... I know, I'm just on a fucking... No, you're good. I'm on a little, I'm just thinking about a little how hot stone monologue grandma right now. <laughs> I'm on a, we say that again. <laughs> so I was just thinking about how hot Laura's she grandma is. This. Every time Laura she's brings up her grandma, hot. I say she's hot. She is hot. How dare who, you? Who? Who? Her grandma. Oh, your grandma is she hot? Is she's ninety four. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> What's the hottest thing about her? Is it her lips? Her personality. Personality. Her lips. No, both. Grandma <laughs> lips. Is it those grandma lips? Has she got a little moustache? I like little them little curtains. The curtains. <laughs> You know when a grandma's lips get so dried out and they get all like cracky? Although, wait, what's your family heritage? Do you, are you um, Latina? Hispanic, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Hispanic. So I bet your grand looks good for her age. She probably... I mean, you know, she does have good skin. Yeah. I gotta shame her for yeah. that. Yeah. She doesn't look good. She looks great. Women of color generally <laughs> know you. how to look I'll after this shit. Do you know what I mean? They like... <laughs> so she might have some nice, plump, full lips. Describe her lips. Yeah, they're pretty full. Yeah. No no injections Grandma's needed. Awesome. Abuela. Full no, lips. abuela. Mm. The, beauty, the beauty of the abuela. <laughs> <laughs> I want to press my lips 94 years lips. young, am I right, Molly? Oof. More like, and ready. More like 49, right? Hey. Yeah. Real, real gilf status. Real gilf. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. She she rides the G-Wagon. It just says <laughs> gilf money. <laughs> you know? Like, it's just like badass. Yeah. And her little scooter. Yeah, I love that mobility scooter. Just. What's with the grandma yes. kick that we're on, too? Because last episode, we were talking about my grandma flying naked. She's got a stripper pole naked. attached to the back of the <laughs> mobility scooter. She just parks up. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Gets That's off so it. good. She's just like sliding down her hips yeah, crack. Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. oh, God. And instead of like getting wet, it just gets all dusty up and oh, down. Yeah. The, That's <laughs> good. That's it. That's the grip. It's like hand chalk. It looks like chalk has been. All- <laughs> I'm so sorry. If your grandma, I love it. Your grandma, does she I watch this she's show? Watching. Does she watch this show? Let's does hope she- so. I'll send her this clip. Abuela, I'm so sorry for Abuela, this Laura, disgusting improvisation we have endeavored upon. Laura's grandma, call me. I love you. 702 900 6446. I think, I, listen, you know why I like old people? I mean, uh, we're going on so many different tangents. This is how we always do. Standard. <laughs> old, you learn something with every conversation you have with an old person, even if they're not uh, ostensibly bright. Yeah. Because there's, there's clever old people and there's fucking stupid old people. <laughs> Just like there's clever and stupid young people, right? So I, I'm really drawn to like characters, interesting characters. And someone who's lived and lived through... I'm now at an age at 40. Do you mind me asking your age? Do you, are you honest about it? Do you talk I'm about it I'm 38. 
38. 49. 49. Are you really 49? No, I'm 32. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> So what? 32. What? Good skincare. Who's your doctor? Because yes. I need to go see them. No, um, 32 and 38, <clears throat> right? So you're, okay, so possibly neither of you just necessarily there. I think there's something weird about writing 40 on a piece of paper. It made me feel like legitimately older, like I'm middle-aged. Mm-hmm. I'm middle-aged. <gasps> I'm middle-aged. Is right? a crisis coming or are we good? It's not a crisis. <laughs> okay. I'm not a crisis because I think this is going to be my best decade. I feel really positive about mm-hmm. the fucking work I've done. You yeah. know what I mean? That, that can make you happy in day-to-day existence. But what I realize is um, I learned so fucking much from people who have gone through three or four more of those monumental stages of oh, life changes. You know absolutely. What I mean? There's something really like interesting to learn from people like that. So that's why I got old friends. No, I, I love one of my best friends is like 64. She does my hair. She like has learned, taught herself about Bitcoin. She taught herself coding. She's like love always that. has some new like hyper fixation that she's learning about and working towards. Yeah. And she's insane. And she's lived like, the wildest life like she had a yogurt shop she was involved in like drugs like in mexico she was like yeah. just she did hella just, acid. Sorry, can i just, hella, can I just hella, say hella the way acid, you just introduce dude. this lady as like she's had a crazy life like own a yogurt shop and i was like <laughs> that's fucking boring and then you came in with and sold drugs in mexico yeah. that was such a yeah. that went from zero to a hundred literally in a fucking and heartbeat. that's her and wow, i've seen okay. photos of her yogurt shop she like hand painted murals so it wasn't like a did she smuggle like the a drugs yogurt land within pots of yogurt like, we can't because that's tell. what they did in Breaking Bad didn't they with the, yes. with the, the food that was coming into the chicken store yeah. they had the drugs hidden within the fucking sauces you just never know <sighs> Yeah, I mean, she's we're not... the real life. No, fucking she's but she's wild. Listening. She'll just be like, "Do you want to go kayaking?" I'm like, "The fuck!" Yeah. Like, uh, okay, we're going kayaking, nice. and it's just like, and she has so many like things that have been helpful. Like, I've known her since before my divorce, um, and you know what they say about like a a nail tech or a, a hair salon is basically like your mini therapist because you're stuck there with right. them for at least makeup an hour. Artist. Right. Makeup artist, all that makeup kind of artist. stuff. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. And people like feel vulnerable when someone else is like taking care of parts of you. You know what I mean? And it all just kind of comes out. And the advice that she has given me, just the stories that she's told about like her and her own mother have helped me like figure out things with my relationship. And just like there's so much perspective because like when you're young and you think you know everything, it's like you've had such a minute amount of experiences. Absolutely. And it's like you don't know shit. Yeah. And then like the more shit you learn, you're like, oh, I'm actually so dumb. Yeah. Like, how mm-hmm. did I not see all these things? How did I not see this sign? Or I truly think I mushroom psilocybin can speed that process. It's a catalyst to make you feel that way because when you get reduced down to fucking <clears throat> dust and mm-hmm. then also expanded to feel like I'm creator and the creator, I'm, we're all one of the same fucking energy mm-hmm. or God or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, uh, that makes you realize you ain't shit and like oh i'm only a small piece of the puzzle i'm not the mm-hmm. protagonist of the story yeah mm-hmm. and it, it so also take drugs kids <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> no if you're 21 i think everyone at 21 yeah. should be forced to take five grams of mushrooms i mean i'm ready to do that tonight <laughs> five grams i've never done five grams i've done an ape oh you fucking and I oh, had an ape's ego solid, death. I had you had ego an ego death, death. great yeah. perfect yeah. literally thought i was dying <laughs> it was crazy yeah and it's it it also is kind of like this moment that you have when you have that ego death where it's like well n- nothing is really that important like do the thing oh, i don't know what i was reaching for i was reaching for that it's in my hands like, Damn, yeah, I was oh. like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry this is really interesting but i gotta suck this thing right now <laughs> i gotta suck my eyeballs off that i gotta shirt fucking up. suck this bow tie off this charming little gentleman penis that feels so mine's got a bit of a kink to the left a little bit a little bit of a curvature you know what i mean yeah this you can't guy, really bend this, this guy's a, that's a straight rod isn't it that's a that's solid that's like a roman road that yeah that's a that's a weapon yeah we that's haven't named him would you like to name him oh so much um so can't be can Jeff. i think about it can i name him at the end okay. of the episode yeah, absolutely. yes please whenever we wrap that up i'm yes. gonna like yeah because he uh looking he deserves, at you he deserves some time he's we're gonna a, build it up Looks like a little moustache. He looks so earnest. Yeah. Earnest is his name. Oh! <laughs> Yo, tell me that's, that's not an earnest. That, that is an earnest. Look at that. He looks like he does your Who? taxes. Me? <laughs> Who? Me? He's an old British penis. Oh, and a regimental like- soldier called Ernest Hemingway the Third. Yeah, there you go. That's your cock. I love that thing. We're going to get him. Name that cock. 
Let's play. <laughs> Do you have a name for your Yo, cock? Yo, we should have smoked at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. We're way funnier now. Hell yeah. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> anyway, tell me about all that serious shit you were talking about a second ago. I don't even fucking remember. Was Do you name your Morton. cock? Yeah. That no, was no, was no, no. My theory. I have a theory me about this. I have a theory about this. I'd say quietly. Do you name your cock? Men who name their cocks or who give some kind of pet name to their cock Small cocks. Yeah, that's my belief. Small cock energy. I've always like my penis. It's not gig- It's not uh, gargantuan, but it's certainly not average. It's like kind of in proportion to my height. I w- always felt very good about it. I'm a little. It curves a bit to the left. That's well, you're a bit very annoying. tall. You have what? But six if you, two, six But three? if you're on your side and she's a certain way, then it can hit the G spot. So oh, it, it doesn't works. make a difference. Once huh. it goes in, it straightens up. What I'm oh, saying is, oh, it's okay, just got. Cool. It's not like weird kink like yeah. that. I've the seen pink- some that are like. The penis isn't kinked, but you know you have <laughs> muscles either side of your your really? well, yeah, like you have pubic like pubic muscles. My left one is obviously shorter slightly. Okay, cool. So it's slightly taller, so it, that's why I just sort of. Have you ever had hangs your- to the left, dresses to the left? Is that what they say? Ah. Hangs to the left. I don't know why I'm looking at DJ. Like, <laughs> hey DJ, they- when you talk about <laughs> cocks with your friends, <laughs> take it to the bro, left. You- dress to the left, hang to the left. <clears throat> Cur- well, no, but curve in in curve insinuates like insinuates my penis hang. fucking kinks. It doesn't kink. It's it's a, it's a great, lovely, soft like like average great, banana. Great, lovely and soft. No, 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 no. You know the banana. You know the banana <laughs> rise, right? Yeah. But not quite as pronounced. But just a soft, gentle upwards curvature, okay. which is great. But then the muscles of the pubis. <laughs> And and when I pull it out, it sings opera. It's That's incredible. That's so beautiful. He's friends with Ernest. The two of them know each other from <laughs> theatre circles. They go way they go back. Way back. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a little. He's got stubble. My penis. Just Aww. so he's, he's really dashing. He's really wise dashing. Too. Rides horses. Really dashing guy. <laughs> Does cool. he play polo? <laughs> Amazing. With the royals. Fabulous. He's very established. Yeah. Oh this guy. My. This guy is a. He's a crypto billionaire as well. He's really. <laughs> Ethro my or penis. Bitcoin? I'm just hearing myself <laughs> talk about how much I like my penis. But here's the deal. Yo, fuck it. I don't give a fuck. You should like your penis. Here's the reality. <laughs> I think I have a decent <laughs> cock. I've never had any complaints. It served me well. And my numbers are solid that I can't be shitty. Can't be shitty. Yeah. Not however, a shitty dick. However, it's not gargantuan. It's not like you don't pull it out and everyone goes, <gasps> it's not yeah. one of those. It's right? not you know like a I mean? browser's face. Nah, one. Like, nah. Oh. Nah, nah. Cool. And also, you know, I've got foreskin. That's why I guess a lot of people don't like that as well. That's you know ridiculous. I, mean? like, I, I think no more, more women nowadays want the foreskin. Yeah. Well, it keeps us clean, keeps us free from infection. Yeah. The and reason when you jerk off, you don't need to use like a bunch of lube and lotion, right? Because you just have skin. Oh, I mean... I mean, you can, but it's not as like... I don't really use lotion most of the time I jerk off. No, actually. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, Do most guys always use lotion? I don't know. Lotion, well, like a lube, like, yeah. People, I that's what I you. Actually, lotion, you're right. Everybody. Yo, actually, that's a good fucking point. You can't make like a Jergens joke with someone with foreskin. Because if I pulled my foreskin way back and just held it at the base, taught, and then tried to jerk yeah. it, I'd be like, ow, that's friction. That's hurting. Yeah. yeah. That's yo, different. Yo. I've never thought about that. I've had a penis for 40 years and I've never considered that <laughs> I, I think concept. about having a wow. penis so, so often. Not that I like necessarily want a penis, but it's one of those things like with experiences. You with want people, one. It's like, I, I just, want one. That's something I will never know what it feels like. Even if I use a strap on, that's super fun. I love using a strap on on someone. But I will never know the sensation of what a dick feels like, what it feels like to jack off, what a dick feels like inside of a vagina. I only have the vaginal reference. Yeah. So it's just I have something. But we'll I've never about. get to know what it's like to feel someone within you. You yeah. know what I mean? Unless you're a gay but, man. Yeah. In which but case, I was like, no. that's very easy. Do you know what we can all have a shared experience with? Is anal. Yes. Everyone yeah, knows it's gonna never, know what anal feels like. You know what? Anal for me, I love give I'm happy to give to a woman if you I'm I find it I'm, I'm into it actually. I like it. Yeah. Not equally to necessarily to vaginal, but you know, mm-hmm. it's it's great. It's, it's more of a process. But you have to yeah, you have to you have to prepare, you have to give time to the lady to know if she's able to do that that I admire it. Yeah. I yeah. think it's beautiful. You can't just yeah. be like, let's go out to work the bar and then do anal. Yeah, like, like, yo, let's just fuck in the arse. <clears throat> like, well, I had a fucking heavy lunch and I'd much <laughs> rather not and I'd wanna you would much rather <laughs> yeah. not as well. But then also, um, receiving it though, I think that's such a it's such a fear thing for so many, including me straight men. And mm-hmm. I don't know if that's just because of a society led concept that Ugh, big gay's bad do you know what I mean so yeah. therefore the thing of but also I've never had a chick really fucking nail the job like of getting a finger in there and hitting that mm-hmm. G spot because mm. what about the tiny toy you were talking about you complain about us mm-hmm. not knowing where the clitoris is 
lay. Well, we actually with found out. We actually Clitoris. found out from from one of the stock guys at Hemperco that there are like two two sphincter muscles, yes. and one of them, if you like press against it, it will stop a guy from coming. And the other one is like the come one. Oh, There's maybe two. I've been here because I've only had it. Maybe you've been of getting times, the stop they, one. I, literally, only on a couple of occasions have I even let that happen. And when I have, they definitely were hitting the stop button <laughs> rather than the fucking go go <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah. That was a question that I had though. Have you ever had like when you come, like one of your <clears throat> testicles go up like into your? It's called a floating testicle, but no, <laughs> that doesn't really happen to me very often. It has when I was, I guess, younger, maybe when the testicles were more taut. But I'm old enough now that my <laughs> testicles are so old and leathery. I'm not saying they recently, like just in I general. I said I got a decent sized cock, but I'm, I'm, I'm compensating because my balls are three times the length of that and hang really down. <laughs> Actually, that's ankles? why these trousers keep <laughs> riding up my fucking waistline because my giant your balls, balls <laughs> are just slowly fucking eating up. Them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so your bar- you know, like a woman with a beautiful, like- big, plump bum and the cheeks. <laughs> eat the small oh, dress yeah. and like yeah. start to eat mm-hmm. it. Um, oh. yum, 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 yum. That's what <laughs> my balls are doing with my tra- mm-hmm. my slacks um, right now. Just pulling it all oh, up. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, I offset the egregious self arrogant <laughs> attitude towards my penis size. I offset it with my self deprecation about my horrendous that's balls. Amazing. And that's comedy, ladies and gentlemen. Go and see my fucking special. Please, please. go please. watch <laughs> Jeff's special. Jeff's special is amazing. I viewed it last night, actually. Did you and thumb it, was it up or did you I fucking did. leave it. I did thumb it up. <laughs> Share know, it with your grandma. She super seriously. I feel like maybe she's just no, like... No, I actually... Sure. When I do like something, I leave a thumbs nice. up. Right, and it's like you. I leave a heart because there's not often... Did you leave a comment? You didn't leave a comment, did no, you? No, I don't no, leave I comments. See. I don't leave comments almost anywhere. I'll leave anywhere. a comment. <laughs> a comment. She doesn't want to... She doesn't want to validate my 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 art <laughs> all right okay. well you were amazing today yes. and i will go leave a comment yes. on the youtube no, i don't want it now <laughs> uh, leave you a comment as earnest. Ernest set up, will. Set up an account Ernest. as Ernest and be Please. like absolutely the best i never uh, he's a great yeah. critic thank you for naming our cock thank you for sharing no. information yes, about thank yours you. Um, appreciate you thank go, you ladies go watch jeff and where can they follow you as well oh yeah so uh, uh please watch my special jeff leach presents a comedy spectacular on youtube you can find it uh, it's free it's, enjoy it give it a thumbs up if you Link like the it if you hate please. it fucking don't do anything just leave immediately <laughs> if you hate it leave a darken. thumbs up anyway it's all right i'll you. be dead soon enough don't worry it's gonna be fine <laughs> and then uh uh check out comic cougar convo that's my podcast mm-hmm. you yes. ladies are gonna have to come and do it we'd yeah, love, you love to come to. yeah come and do like a, a special you could be my special guest we could do a, an episode all right yeah let's gonna, do it we're gonna we're talk in. about this afterwards we'll yeah you're gonna come down for sure um and then also at Jeff Leach, J E W F L E A C H on all fucking platforms. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, you're this fabulous. Was awesome. Thank, Thank you. you guys for listening, and we will see you Monday. Come. Thank you. You just commanded it. That was the one come. The Totally Wholesome Not Dirty Podcast is presented by TWND Productions, created and hosted by Molly Stewart, co-hosted by Laura Contreras, and produced by David Warren. 